To you, the nine to fiver, just making your way home. To you, the all night driver, out in your cab alone. To you, Hi, my name is Deborah Hall, and I'm the host of the Oregon Coalition's Labor Radio Show on KBOO FM, based in Portland, it's Oregon. Labor Radio. my brother because if you do you can hear their voices still calling from across the years and they're crying across the ocean they're crying across the land dear friends welcome to the labor radio podcast network series highlighting the work of our members the growing network of over 80 shows in five countries serves as a one-stop shop for audiences looking for labor content and as a resource for labor broadcasters, podcasters, and content producers. My name is Evan Papp, and I produce Empathy Media Lab's podcast on labor, political economy, arts, and culture, and we're a proud member of the Labor Radio Podcast Network. Today, I'm speaking with Deborah Hall, who is the host of Oregon Coalition of Black Trade Unionists on Labor Radio KBOO FM in Portland, Oregon. Deborah, so nice to see you. Uh, could we begin with the question of uh, talking a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and what led you to organize labor? Absolutely, Evan, and thank you. Glad to be here. And so I grew up in, in Portland, Oregon, um, in the um, born in the 50s, grew up in Portland in the 60s, um, 70s, started my activism early, um, probably in the early 60s. And the section of town that we lived in was basically the area of town that they said where the hippies lived. And so there was a lot of, lot of political activity. And what I would do, Evan, is there was a, a school ballot measure. I was in second grade, I'll never forget it. There was a school ballot measure. And so we were concerned, you know, because we're going to school and you hear like your parents talking about, oh my God, you know, funding for schools, whatever. So what I did was I gathered some of my schoolmates. We went out to the homes um, around the school and asked them, could we use their yard signs? Took the signs, marched the kids around the playground. And we got on the news, we got them um, in the newspapers. And that kind of got me started with, you know, getting involved in community um, activities. How my mom raised us is, you know, instead of complaining, there's a lot of work to do. And so, you know, why don't you put your mouth where your complaints are and get to work and try to make some of these issues better. And it, it seemed, you know, kind of a natural migration to um, labor because as a person of color, I mean, as a woman, I was finding not having, you know, kind of a um, educational background, it was difficult for me to get, you know, decent jobs. And I kind of moved into the labor sphere, found that there was a voice there, there was power there for people like me and a way to have a good life and to provide that for my community and for other folks. And so I've been sold since day one, absolutely the way to go. So some people aren't, as conscious and uh, don't learn those lessons so early in life and may not be interested in labor or labor media and labor news. So why do you think unions and organized labor are important and, and should be covered on in the media? Like I stated earlier, you know, for, for those of us that have, I don't have, my education, I have a, have a high school education, a high school diploma. I've taken some college classes and having a union job, I, I had some pretty decent jobs in the private sector, but they did not afford me any security. You know, my pay was decent, but I, did I have a good retirement? Did I have good benefits? Did I have someone fighting for me on the job? And was I able to also lend my voice and have an effect on what was going to happen to me in that workplace? As a person of color, that meant everything. Because, you know, outside of our homes, we don't have control over much. And the union gives us that, you know, your, your sense of pride, you know, the dignity, also for the job that we do, there's a lot of pride there. And so I think that, you know, folks, it's, if you're I'm a working person, you know, it's a way to get control of yourself and your life and have a say in what happens in your workplace and on the job. And what unions have you been a part of over the years? My very first union, I started working for Safeway. And so I was um, retail clerks, which is now UFCW. And that was in the late seventies. And then my union, um, um, American Federation of Teachers uh, was a member for, I'm a retiree now. I, I just retired last year, but a 22 year member of the American Federation of Teachers. Great. And can you, could you talk a bit about your show and why you wanted to start it and what it's about? 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so our show, we are in our, our first show was Labor Day of uh, 2013. And we were very excited to get the show because as a, as a Black organization, the Oregon Coalition of Black Trade Unionists, we also were excited to have the opportunity to have that outreach, to be able to come into the studio once a month and have this radio show to talk about, you know, to bring union members on to um, address not only issues for Black union members, but for all union members. We, we talk about local issues, we talk about national issues, we talk about international issues. And so we've been able to have local folks on. We had um, a young man who was the president of the, what is it, the Afro-Cuban dock workers. He, he was on our show um, a couple of years ago. We had some folks from Nigeria um, on our show when they were having issues with their girls getting kidnapped. We've dealt with, uh, talk with folks on the national level, national labor leaders, um, local labor leaders, local everyday folks. And so it's important to us to be able, able to get that word out, to let people know that um, there's a place for you, there's a voice for you, there are, are things happening um, in labor, but we're also trying to you know, get folks kind of stirred up and what things can we do together? What things can we do um, individually? What's our responsibility? So talking a little bit about like the class and race issue, I guess, and obviously um, you could talk about this all day uh, and how they're, they're interconnected. And I, I guess from, um, you know, looking from an outsider looking in, you know, oftentimes there's just this focus on like the white working class and things like that. Um, and the, these major issues are being overlooked. And before we start recording, you did talk about some of the issues you, you're really pushing forward with your group in uh, 2021 and, and beyond. And I guess, could you just talk a little bit about that from, from your perspective, from maybe people who have um, no understanding? Certainly, certainly. So some of the issues that my organization we're looking um, at, and we're trying to keep Black Lives Matter in the forefront. We get some pushback for that. And I get pushback, you know, people say all lives matter, blue lives matter, and we're not negating anyone's life. But, but I don't think anyone can deny, if you look at on a case by case basis, I don't think that you can deny that there's some unfairness and there's a disparity there, okay? You know, all that, that we're looking for is, is, is fairness, okay? If, if something happens and if this is what the punishment is, then that's the pun punishment for everyone. And so that's the word, that's what we're trying to live with. We're also trying to work with our, our allies because what, what we understand as people of color is that we can't change the minds of, of, of white people. You know, folks have got to come to their, their understandings and their um, agreements to themselves, what we can do is spend time together. And we try to do that as our union. We're not only a black organization, we, we um, want everyone to get involved. Everyone who's involved in a labor union can certainly be, be, be um, a part of our organization. And we want them every voice because if we even stay segregated there in our unions, nothing will um, ever change. And so everything that we're trying to do is to try to put, you know, Black Lives Matter, I'm at the forefront, regardless if it's healthcare issues, if it's housing, housing issues, if it's education issues, because all of those things, you know, matter. And then, you know, once we can, I feel that we can get folks on the same page there, we can really look at what the real underlying issue is, and that's classism. Because the folks that are in charge, they don't want any of us to have anything. Okay. And if they can start with one group and they get us to continue to, to section each other off, we're all done for, you know, if we're all, all not fighting for each other, because if I have bad water, you have bad water too. Everyone in the community suffers. And so why, why don't we get together and fight for what our needs are in this community, you know, so that um, our kids have something. And so that's what we're pushing for is for that continuity for that voice, you know, to, to bring folks in and to have them get involved with us. Because again, if you're involved with people on a personal level, you're gonna stand up and you're gonna fight for them as your friends I and mean, your family, not some stranger that, oh yeah, I work with that person or they're in my union, but I don't know much about them. We have to start galvanizing on ourselves as family again. And I think that we won't allow anyone to push us around or to be, you know, 
be mean to us or to treat us wrong if that happens. So as a member of the Labor Radio Podcast Network, how did you hear about it? And how did you kind of like join, I guess, because we're always looking to expand the, the number of members and, and the, not only in the United States, but outside as well. And why do you think a network like this could, is, is important? How I heard about the network is I had been getting the emails for them a while, but I believe it was you and Chris who reached out to Tina um, Turner Morford, who was our president for Oregon Coalition of Trade Unionists, to um, do those um, um, were they the live streams on um, uh, um, Facebook, excuse me. And so after we start doing the show, the outreach is incredible. And the voice of labor is, is not just labor centered. We're, we're all also community members. And the things that are talked about on these shows are, are things that do them affect every person all over the world, you know. I think that because we don't get really major time on, on major networks, not even networks that are friendly to us, this is um, uh, critical. It's, it's a way that we can become in control of our word, you know, and to make sure that it's our voice, that it's not being, you know, filtered through, through someone else's filters and being dumbed down or being added to or subtracted from. It, it's critical. And I think that uh, more folks should love to get involved. And it's a lot of fun too, you guys, being able to produce your own show and to get, get your point of view out there the way that, that you want it stated. It's awesome and it's very powerful. So what advice would you give to people who maybe are thinking about starting a show and are a little scared? Because it, what was your process in, in developing the, the show that you have? We just um, um, got the opportunity. You know, um, I believe the gentleman, Jamie Parkers, called us. He said that they had a spot open. Um, um, our labor radio show is a um, cable host hosted weekly. We do the first Monday of each month. And so we were provided that opportunity. We looked at it as, as that um, as, op, as opportunity to get our, our voice out to the world. And we jumped on it. And then we thought about, you know what, we don't know what we're doing, but we'll figure it out because we're on the radio. We have a voice and we have airwaves and we have folks that, you know, I've had friends of mine that are, you know, have been in, in Pennsylvania and driving down whatever and turn on the radio. Hey, I just heard Deborah Hall on the da, 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 you know? And so that's, um, cool in, in itself, but the fact that, that my friend in Pennsylvania could hear what we were talking about labor-wise in Portland, Oregon, blew me away. So if you folks are thinking about it, go for it. Just go for it. You, you'll figure it out. You'll work it out. And there's a network here to support you, and they do a really good job. So I wouldn't hesitate. So, so in closing, looking into the future of organized labor, where do you see opportunity and hope? You know, Matthew, I see opportunity everywhere, um, everywhere. Um, I think we need to get back to talking to each other. And I feel that even during this pandemic, that this medium here, Zoom has, has there's a face to talking. You know, we got into texting and email. Um, if this is what um, it's gonna be, um, we have, have a huge advantage because no one has an issue with getting on Facebook and doing their live streaming. So one step up for the show, you know, it's just one step up, up to do the show. I, I'm extremely hopeful. And the reason I'm hopeful is that young people are, are, are hopeful and they're giving me hope um, as an older person. You know, I can look back on all the things that have happened in my 60 plus years, you know, but what gives me hope is that those young people, they're promising me that they're gonna keep fighting and they're gonna keep holding that torch and they're gonna move forward. And I feel that it's up to folks like me who have been around a while, you know, to try to open those doors for us to work our inside game, you know, because we're, we're, I'm in place to do that. But I'm, I'm very hopeful. I'm extremely hopeful, you know. That's all I have right now is hope. You better listen, my brother, because if you do, you can hear there are voices still calling from across the years. 
And they're crying across the ocean They're crying across the land And they will until we all come to understand None of us are free None of us are free light if we don't say it's wrong then that says it's right we got to feel for each other let our brothers know we're here got to get the message send it out all loud and clear none of us are free Oh, no.